What's up everybody, hope you're all having a good day. So today's video is going to be more towards the, those of you that are getting ready to have surgery on your rotator cuff and just want to know some tips and ideas of what you might not have thought about that you're going to have to deal with after surgery, especially the first couple of days after surgery. All right, so let's go. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is right after you get out of surgery and you're going home, if you go to the surgical center or where you're getting it done with tie shoes, you're going to have to retie those shoes. Obviously, right out of surgery with just one hand, uh, you're not going to be able to do that. Uh, you could have somebody tie it for you or slip on shoes. These have been a lifesaver for me. I wear them all the time. I have about 10 pair of the band slip ons. So, very easy to get on and off. Um, don't have to worry about any about tying shoes for you. So that is definitely something to think about getting uh, before you go into surgery. Or you can do this. Flip flops. Got my band's flip flops. And that's gonna depend on the time of the year. Uh, you can wear flip flops inside your house all the time, obviously, but depending on the time of the year when you get your surgery, if it's winter time and you live in an area that's really cold, I'm not sure you're gonna to wanna to wear flip flops outside when you're able to start going out. Uh, so, again, just something to think about that you might not have thought about before surgery. All right, next thing. So, it was about a week after my surgery is when I got my first doctor's visit back, talked to the surgeon. He okayed me to shower, and pump soap was a lifesaver. It's easier to just pump the soap into the next item, which would be a brush, in order to reach where you need to reach because you only have one hand. And I come to find, find out you, you use one hand to wash one side of the body and you use the other hand to wash the other side. So can't wash this shoulder with this hand, it's really tough to. So this can get all over here. So it's easy to have that pump soap. You can't lather soap up with one hand. I mean, you can, depending on how skilled you are. It's just much easier to have that pump soap. So nice brush and some pump soap. All right, next thing. So I have these tank tops. And what's cool about these tank tops are, I had my mother-in-law sew Velcro on them. That way when you, the first couple of days, you're not gonna be able to put a shirt on. Having these Velcro on the side here, and actually I would love to have both sides and just slip it right up or down over you and Velcro on back. You can at least have some type of shirt on. Now, what I did find out is so I got my surgery a couple weeks ago and that's going to be in April we had some warm days and when I went outside you got this sling up against your body if you have to be like me you create a lot of heat this is a 100% cotton shirt and it got drenched so suggestion is depending on the time that you get your surgery um, and I mean time wise as in month wise if you're in the summer months where it's hot and it happens to be humid out and you are able to eventually go out and it's not going to take maybe about after two or three days you're going to want to venture outside the cotton shirt's going to soak up absorb all the sweat underneath of this arm sling and it's going to feel horrible so my suggestion would be to also get like something with the under armor material to it you can get the cheaper versions that they have at walmart that will help breathe a little bit better underneath that uh underneath this sling that you have, that way it's more comfortable for you. So these things were a lifesaver at least four or five days from surgery till then. It just getting this on, at least having a shirt on was, was cool. So Velcro both sides or one side. All right, so the next thing isn't really something that you're gonna to wanna to buy before, but it's something that you're going to have, okay? And that's going to be pain medicine. Okay, they come in all kind of different models, shapes, sizes, and stuff. And they all have different tops to be able to open them up. So there's going to come a time for me, my wife, the first week she took off to make sure she was there to help me out with stuff. Uh, but once she went back to work, you're on your own. And if it's time to take that pain medicine, and you've got to twist this off, it's 
kind of hard to do and you don't want you obviously putting that bottle in your hand and twisting down with your shoulder because your shoulder is going to get involved and you don't want to get your muscles involved opening up that bottle. So cool ones are the ones that pop off. You can actually, if I can do it, pop the tops off yourself. The prescription bottles they give you, some of them sometimes, you can do one-handed. Sometimes you can't. So that's just another thing to think about once you get on your own and you're not wanting to use that arm and that hand that much until therapy says you can use it to do stuff like that. You don't want to get caught not being able to open those type of uh, medicine bottles that are going to take that pain away. So something to think about. Okay, so the next thing that you might not have thought about, but you probably did, um, icing your shoulder. So. Some surgeons, some doctors give the that ice machine. My daughter actually had it for her knee when she had ACL surgery that you fill it up with ice and it continually puts um, cold liquid around inside of the wrap that's, that was, that's on your shoulder, hers was on her knee. Um, my surgeon who was her surgeon also uh, ended up not prescribing stuff like that. I don't think that's something that is prescriptions anymore. Um, that I don't know. If you do get one, Awesome. If you don't, you might have to have a couple ice packs. That is essential to have to keep that swelling, get that swelling down uh, on your shoulder during this recovery time, especially for the first couple weeks. And then once you get back into um, therapy, that physical therapy, it's going to start getting sore again. It's going to start swelling up a little bit. Essential to have these uh, at your house. I like to have the ones that have the the elastic band on it. That way. Put the ice on your shoulder and band it around and it kind of stays on there. Um, the suggestion of get bags of peas or corn, I tried that and they just fall off. So it's kind of a hard area, rounded area here to have things stay on it. Um, those pea bags and corn bags just kept falling off so kind of got frustrating. So that's something to think about before you, again, before you go into surgery get some type of wrap. They have the wraps that go on that actually you can freeze in the freezer and they can be put on. They're much easier than trying to lay an ice pack on your shoulder because it'll keep falling off. Okay, so the next one is going to be, guys, sleep just isn't going to happen. Just, unless you're the type of person who's going to sleep sitting up, I am not. Not unless, if I've had a full day of snowboarding, skating, mountain biking, something like that, I get home, I can probably fall asleep sitting up. Okay, but you're not going to be doing much um, with this on. So for me, sleep and pain at night has been terrible. Actually, last night was the first night I got a couple hours of sleep. Um, before that, the day before that, I was up for 36 hours. I just could not sleep. It's going to happen. It's something you're going to have to deal with. Um, so I was told before going into surgery, and everybody kept saying, Lazy boy chair, lazy boy chair, get a lazy boy chair. So we'll go up and show you my lazy boy chair that uh, I use to attempt to sleep in. And for that, we're gonna switch to the GoPro. All right, now that we have transferred our film from our DSLR to the GoPro, let's head up and take a look at this chair. Okay, so I had this before I got surgery. I didn't get it for surgery. And you know what? And this is just my opinion. I, I'm not sure if it's something that you should go out and buy or not. They're expensive. This isn't obviously the lazy boy, like I said, it's a reclining chair. But one thing that I can tell you is I think the reason they want you in this is because of the limited space you have to kind of like roll around. I did try once to lay in bed and I found myself moving too much and that's not a good thing to do with uh, with his shoulder just being repaired, just having surgery on it. So that's probably why they want you in the chair. Um, so I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna show you what I feel about this chair is kind of like you don't really need to buy one of these. I mean, it's a pretty expensive thing to buy. So let me show you something here. So, and now, also what I'm saying is, I mean, this was great definitely for the first um, week to sit in, to lay back in just a little bit, to watch TV. My wife came up with the cart idea, have my cell phone charger, my watch charger, um, just 
various things in there that I needed to get so I wouldn't have to get up and, uh, and get anything. But one of the big things I'm seeing is, so I would say that's what they're saying to recline and to sleep. To me, that's still a sitting position. I went back and actually tried sleeping like this, which is pretty close to a laying down position. It still has you somewhat upright back here. Um, but at this point, it's still putting pressure back on your back, putting pressure back on that shoulder. Um, so do you need one of these? I, I do, I'm still out. I think I've spent maybe half of my time the past two weeks trying to sleep in these. The other half trying to prop myself up on the on the couch with pillows. It seems like the pillows work better. Prop myself up on the couch seems to look, uh, work a lot better. So I did try this. Um, it's funny because before, <laughs> before the surgery, I love this. Uh, after it, I just want to stay away from it for now. Um, <clears throat> had some really sleepless nights in this the past couple weeks. So I think they want you kind of sleeping like this. Um, Again, I've already said I can't sleep like that, so that's why I would move it all the way back and recline all the way back down. So, your choice, just my opinion, on about trying to sleep in this. Definitely do not try to sleep in your bed. Um, if you prop yourself up in your bed, there's still, depending on the size of your bed, there still is a chance that you're going to spin around, try to, to roll over. I don't know if you're a side sleeper sleep on your back, sleep on your stomach, uh, you're gonna move a lot in bed. Where this here gives you limited space. And when I used to prop myself up over here with the couch, all these pillows around me, I'd have the little foot ottoman to put my foot out on. I would not lay this way. I would still continue the kind of sitting up with propping pillows up, kind of like that to try and sleep. So again, my opinion, in my opinion, the verdict, not sure. It's just, it's still out in reference to the uh, chair. So maybe look at some other YouTubers and, and see what they said about sleeping in the chair. Okay, so let's go over one more thing. And that's gonna be this, this sling. Um, so let's make it two more things. The sling, try to get maybe another one from your surgeon, from your doctor. This thing's gonna get nasty. You sleep in this thing, um, you're gonna, be doing stuff in it during the day and they don't want you out of it for too long so if you throw it in the wash machine and let it dry maybe get another sling and I found myself doing this when I'm in this sling holding my shoulder up I guess overcompensating thinking knowing there's an injury there um, and what it ended up doing is it ended up really giving me cramps back here in like my trap muscles and stuff because of trying to keep that shoulder shrugged up so remember to relax your arm into this sling. Allow the sling to take all the weight of your arm. If not, you may end up with the same problems that I did. And I'm actually having pains in my shoulder blades that had nothing to do with the surgery. And it's because of me trying to shrug my shoulder up to hold my shoulder up. I, I don't know why, but that's what I was doing. So I hope all this has helped you. I hope your recovery goes great. And hope to see you out on the mountain.